got to look good for the recording. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Don Sauce. My pronouns are they, them. And tonight we're going to be playing a game of Spirit of 77. And the first thing that I want to do is let uh, Ian, Ian Williams, uh, read us the agenda, the player's agenda uh, for the game of Spirit of 77. Okay, so this is what we as players are trying to do. Uh, the first one is active participation. Um, the world of the 77 is filled with kung fu fighting school mistress nuns, bionic glam rockers, and fast driving race car drivers. It's me, uh, who keep pet chimps in their passenger seats, and we're going to try to explore that world. Uh, go big or go home. Uh, some games encourage a subtle touch. With nuanced levels of intrigue, Spirit of 77 is not that game. It says play it at maximum volume. Uh, share the mic. Uh, chances are you're playing in a group of two or more, which we are. Uh, so it's pretty easy to get caught up uh, and kind of navel gaze and make your character always the star. And it says don't do that. And the last one is stick it to the man. And it says, well, this goes without saying. So we're going to stick it to the man. <laughs> I think I have a good group together of people who are interested in sticking it to the man. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and, and share my agenda as the game's uh, DJ, which, empowered by the apocalypse parlance, basically makes me the, the, the game master or the dungeon master. And those are, make the world of Spirit of 77 seem real, despite all of the ridiculous ridiculous stuff we're going to get into tonight and oh my gosh uh nobody got to hear our world building session because twitch and obs ate ate it uh but our, our characters are a lot they're just a lot uh but despite all of that it's also going to be a story that's kind of grounded in these characters lives i think it's going to be in an interesting way um fill the characters lives with action uh, this is very much a. This game is very much an homage to B uh, slash seventies genre cinema. So there's going to be a lot of um, bombast, so to speak, and I think our characters are going to be really able to provide that. We're going to play to find out what happens, which means none of us know where the story is going to go, and that's the most exciting part of this game. Uh, we kind of have to commit to how little we ultimately know about what's going to happen and just let the game ride out. Um, and, the, and powered by the apocalypse, uh, because Spirit of 77, the game by David Kitsia and Bob Richardson, I should have led with that, um, it runs on the powered by the apocalypse engine uh, created by D. Vincent Baker. Um, and there are a lot of really great mechanics in Powered by the Apocalypse games to make sure that we as players are playing to find out what happens and not trying to plan out a story ahead of time. And then finally, um, make it worth it, which just means that by the end of this, you as the characters, you as the players, should feel like I've made this story worth your while. And on that note, just to set the mood appropriately, we are going to start off in the subway system of New York City, uh, where the Rat King is currently walking down a dimly lit uh, subway. And Rat King, can you explain to us a little bit about what your character, who your character is, and what's going on right now? Sure. Okay. Um, well, the Rat King is essentially a bit of a not necessarily a loner, but uh, a recluse living down in the, the tunnels of New York, and you know, I, 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 I wander through the tunnels, but I also like take the trains, depending on where I need to go, and my, I think one of my driving ambitions is to kind of discover what the, what's really going on under the city, like the government is hiding its, its fancy technology that it doesn't want anybody to know about, and um, Despite the city being, you know, basically in a ruin, so you, you can you can tell how, where the priorities are, and um, you know, I'm kind of looking to seek that out. And kind of my day to day trade is, whenever whatever I find, I I, I barter and, and sell. Uh, my main, um, I guess, market market agent is uh, the singular, which is uh, an actual rat king, who I. Um, you know, kind of stole my name from. And yeah, so that's kind of like um, probably what I'm doing down there is looking around for tech and, and clues and just kind of an interesting, interesting story to make my day a little more interesting. 
Boom and I, I seem to remember in our world building session that we had decided that when the story began, you had just had a, a deal with the the singular. I guess we're calling him the singular now, not the collective. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah, singular. Okay, the singular. <laughs> great. Uh, the, the singular. Uh, you just had like a bad deal. Really puts on airs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And you were, you were, you know, heading through the subway tunnels, and that's when all of the lights in the subway go out. And before before the lights go out, I kind of want to set the scene a little bit. Uh, you're you're a New Yorker, Yousef, so you kind of have a, probably the best idea out of all of us. Paint me a little picture um, of this subway tunnel the Rat King is walking down after this deal goes south. Sure. Um, it is... One of those disused tunnels that you get a few kind of uh, service trains go through, but it doesn't get regular um, re regular lines, so it's a little safer to walk through. I mean, every now and then you might get one of those like diesel um, repair engines that go through where they're uh, where they used to work on the tracks, and those are pretty loud. So you can hear them coming, so it's pretty safe to walk through. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, it has the, the it has service lights on and. Um, emergency lights, and I just passed uh, one of the few stations, you know, that uh, are not open to the public, but are, are fully lit and sometimes maintained. And what borough cool. are we in? Uh, we're in Manhattan right now, you we're know, Manhattan. it's kind of a, it's kind of a hub. Maybe um, Washington Heights, there's okay. a lot of good stuff there. So like almost in Harlem? Yeah, and that's kind of where the train starts. Like you know, they're kind of dig starting to dig through the bedrock of um, of the of the island. So you get a little bit more interesting tunnel patterns. So it's it's one of my favorite places in the, in, the, in Manhattan to 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 wander as I do. Okay, great. And as as you're you know just getting by this uh, subway station that had been lit but that nobody uses anymore, and there's this kind of this eerie silence. Uh, that's when the all of the kind. huh the best kind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's when all of the lights go out. Uh, and at that moment, you hear a rustling in the subway behind you. Like thousands and thousands of feet, tiny, tiny feet scurrying. Uh, what do you do? Well, I neglected to mention that I um, am accompanied by my familiar. Oh, yeah, you definitely have. What is your? What was your, rat's, your pet rat's name? Vinny. Vinny, that's right. <laughs> that's my neighbor's name. He's from New York, too, actually. So I'm not making that up. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, I'm like, hey, Vinny, go see what's up, boy. You got better ears and nose than I do, so. And we should, we should probably explain something now, because for people who missed the world-building session, in, in Spirit of Which Sexist, is everybody. Yeah, which is everybody, except for us. Uh, in Spirit of 77 games, you have something called a thang. Uh, and it's like an extra kind of unique element of your character. And you said, and the Rat King, I'm sorry, I have to address all of you by your character's names please, from this please. point forward. Uh, that's like one of the like rules of power, Powered by the Apocalypse games. Anyways, the Rat King's thang is a rat that he has a psychic connection with named Vinny. Uh... Because we were apparently playing I'm, Dishonor. I'm an anamorph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I mean, so I see. I send Vinny to go kind of investigate where, what the sound is coming from. Well, uh, Vinny starts. You know, you kind of. What is it like when you and Vinny mind meld, so to speak? Um, I get you know like little bits and snippets of um, his experience. I don't get like a clear vision. You know, uh, I think. When he's actually engaged and not trying to communicate with me, it's it's a little hard to, to hear what he, what's going on. But you know, I, I get sensations. Um, you know, I think our main communication actually is probably more like not verbal, but like directly addressing each other versus like me literally um, possessing him, like in Dishonored. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, you know, I send him away. He has to come back and tell me what's going on. It has okay. to be a conversation. Okay, I see. All right, well. Uh, Vinny runs off for a little bit and that sound gets louder and louder and louder and then Vinny comes running for all hell back to you or as much as a, a rat can run I suppose. pretty fast, pretty fast. Yes. I, I've seen plenty of subway rats in my yeah. time in New York uh, you do. 
Uh, and the the one you know impulse you get from Vinny is that you need to run. Well, that's what I do then. All right, uh, and today, at least at the very beginning, I kind of want to cut really quickly between the characters just so that we can kind of you know get everybody introduced really fast. Um, so we will be returning to the Rat King very shortly to figure out what's going on with him. Uh, just above you in the streets of Manhattan, uh, Buck Tussie is parked at a street light on his way to get some what? Get some Billy beer? Is that what we decided last night, uh, Buck? That's right. Uh, this is actually, Billy beer has just come out, and I'm a big fan of Jimmy Carter. And, of course, his brother Billy Carter is one of the world's foremost beer drinkers. So I took my car, Green Tammy. And I drove to, because my girlfriend's Tammy, but I have a green Barracuda who is also named Tammy, so differentiate between the two because I talk a lot about my car and my, and my girl. I call <laughs> Barracuda green Tammy. So me and Roscoe, who is my mechanic, uh, who is played by Ernest Borgnine in this movie, we went to go get some Billy Beer because, like, you know, you're going to get Billy Beer. New York is a little bit intimidating, and uh, I've, I've, I've seen some hard times. I, I was caught, uh, you know, uh, in mid-coitus with, with, with Tammy, who was uh, my crew chief's wife, and I've been run out of, you know, NASCAR, or whatever the proto-NASCAR is. I'm, I'm a big southern boy, uh, you know, good looking, but I wear a lot of denim, uh, <laughs> a lot of denim. Or I wear my Cheerwine uh, racing suit because that was the sponsor of my car. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm walking out with some Billy beer under one arm. I got a, I got a case. Uh, Roscoe's got two cases because he's my assistant. And uh, yeah, we're getting back into Green Tammy. We're we're heading to get Green Tammy. All right. So uh, and you're you're pulled up in a in front of a, a stop sign in. <laughs> In Washington Heights, uh, do I have the beer? I have the beer. Oh, the beer is in the car with you. Okay, yes, uh, I got the beer. And as you pull up to that stop sign, uh, this uh, <laughs> God, Jesus, I'm just looking at pic- pictures of old muscle cars. Uh, these two total yuppies. I mean, they look like they're you know just cruising around you know north, you know, up up, almost at upstate. Uh, uptown New York for, you know, not really out of place, in this 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle, black, white stripes down the front, and uh, they see you and your green Barracuda at the stoplight, and they start revving their engines. Uh, And that's when the stoplight goes out, and all the lights in New York City around you go out at the same time. Uh, What do you do? Uh, Do they drive? Oh yeah, they they put pedal to the metal. Oh well, that's that's the, yeah. I'm uh, goddamn. I ain't gonna let a couple Nixon voters like come get me on a special day. <laughs> um, what song is blasting out of Green Tammy's uh, stereo right now? Oh man, uh, we're gonna get some fucking uh, American Woman by Golden Earring. Great. Great. Wait, yeah. is that is that Golden Earring or is that um, Rick Rick uh, Rick uh, Rick not Rick Springfield? Uh, is that Golden Earring that sings American Woman? I thought it was Golden Earring. Wait, you know what? It's just, it's American Woman. It's, okay, wait. great, great. <laughs> American Woman is blasted, and now we're gonna make our first uh, roll of the game. All right. And uh, hey, Ian, um, or not yeah. Ian Buck, I should say. I gotta get yeah. get this together. I'm not off to a good start. <laughs> Uh, this is where we're going to have to show off one of your old boy moves, because Buck's class is that he is a good old boy, which in That's spirit right. of 77 parlance means he's basically the driver. Uh, and, oh gosh, I'm trying to get a good look at your thing. Uh, so are you just trying to outrun these people? What are you trying to do with these yuppies? Um, I'm trying to, like, uh, I'm trying to run them close. Right, like close to their doors, and like basically scare them enough to like slow down, because you know I don't I, I don't want to get lost. I don't know New York that well. Right, you know? that makes sense. So I don't want, yeah. Okay, so that to me sounds like you need to roll. Uh, you pull up this list of the player moves. Uh, keep your cool. Okay. 
Which and is I, I think uh, it's plus in your case would be plus hustle. Okay. And you That's also cool. you also because you're the good old boy, you get to add your cars uh I believe it's your It's my power. Your power to the move. So yeah, you're probably gonna like roll like plus three or four to this. Plus four. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh shit. Alright, well I got a seven. <laughs> Alright. With the plus four? With the plus four. I rolled I'm rolling good. <laughs> this is this is off to a good start. So the way that spirit or the way that powered up by the apocalypse games work is that on a one to a six you have failed the roll, uh, and I as the GM get to make something called a hard move against you as the player. On a seven to nine you get a partial success, which means there are some sort of consequences to your actions. On on a ten plus you know it's considered a total success, and you more or less get all the things that you want. So I'm trying to figure out how to complicate uh, Buck Tussie's life right now. You know what I think happens? I think you blow those those yuppies out of the water. You know, you leave them like a block behind you, but all the oh, Billy yeah. beer in your car comes flying out. Oh there. no! <laughs> oh, it's like all right. Like, I smoke them over a short distance, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, the beer like uh, yeah, it was like it was like in my trunk. Like, mm-hmm. like like I'd gotten so much Billy beer that I could like barely close the trunk, and. Uh, I don't even know if a Barracuda has a trunk, but, you know, we'll roll with it. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Details, it's oh, fine. Oh, goddamn, Roscoe. <laughs> Fucking Billy Bear fell out. Now, what am I going to bring back to Tammy? Like, at least a case of that was for was for her. <laughs> case for me and a case for you. Well, I don't like this. Goddamn, the only reason why I left the motel was to get down there. <laughs> Damn. How are you going to get in the mood for your audition for Fiddler on the Roof later today, uh, B- Buck? Well, I don't know. I mean, all the goddamn lights are out in New York City. I figured that they'd have a little more, like, a backup generator or something like that. Damn, infrastructure up here it just it ain't hitting on as much as I thought it would be. And I think Why are all the lights out? I think that's the exact moment where we cut to Babs Brooklyn. Uh, and I like this shot of Babs Brooklyn. Well, first off... Uh, Babs, can you tell us a little bit about what Babs looks like? She's a badass. Well, that, that's a description of her personality. <laughs> She's five foot four. Okay. Muscular. Okay. Braided long blonde hair. Okay. A leather jacket that serves more than just for a fashion statement. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we get this, this, this shot of Babs Brooklyn in a, you know, near a, a transformer out in the kind of the Brooklyn boonies. You're almost in Long Island at this point, because that's where you would actually see something like that. And uh, Babs Brooklyn has a gun in her in her hand, and can we talk a little bit about Babs, Babs Brooklyn's special gun? Yeah, I have a hold on one minute, an electric um, it's, it's, a, it's a special Whoa. custom made uh, weapon that was built just for me. For some some special friends that uh, hang out at the subway, kind of help me get a hold of this, um, and it's an electricity gun with multi levels of of abilities from just a general stun to a full blown uh, potential citywide blackout. Yeah, because we have this shot of Babs Brooklyn holding this gun and a completely just blown out transformer out in the Long Island slash Deep Brooklyn boonies. Uh, well, you always have to test your, your guns out. And, and uh, Babs Brooklyn, what do you do now that you've caused the 1977 New York City blackout? What any smart Brooklyn woman would do. You take your gun and your truck and you get the hell out of there. <laughs> as quick as you can. Great. I, I I think um, so. Where does where would Babs Brooklyn go? Where where are you going? I'm going to head on down to. Um, so you you said that um, I'm in the boonies right now. You are basically in Long Island, yeah. I okay, have some so friends from Long Island who would take umbrage to that statement, but that's okay. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to head to car wash and go through car wash real quick and get rid of any type of uh, country debris that might be on my truck. I think you might not understand how Brooklyn works, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I don't. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> um, 
But right, I, know, I, a, I, 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 I do kind that. of like the idea of like maybe you got like a big scorch mark on your car and you're trying to get the car to a car wash to wash off this like burn that you managed to get on there when you accidentally fired off this gun that you don't really you understand how it works. Too. Okay. That works. That works. That sounds good. Well, you said I was out in the sticks, so I just went with it. Uh, so yeah, the sticks um, in the sticks in in New York City means like South Brooklyn or uh, Staten Island or something. Very good, very good. <sighs> Wu Tang. So once once I do that, once I get the uh, the scorch marks off the truck, I'm gonna cruise around the the town, head over towards the Brooklyn Bridge, just kind of scope things out. Well, you got to make it to that to that car wash first, and. Uh, as you're heading towards that car wash, you know, you're driving down the BQE, uh, that's the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. I don't know if that existed in 1977, but we're going to assume it did. Uh, <laughs> you see a cop car far enough away that it wouldn't be able to, to make you immediately, but it is heading in your direction and its lights aren't on yet. What do you do? What would I do? Mm-hmm. Well, not what, well, yeah, what do you do? Well, um, I would uh, just maintain my speed, make sure I'm not going over the speed limit or anything like that, and uh, possibly look for a side road to flip my blinker on and, and head down, just to kind of just get out of the view, just to eliminate any possibilities of uh, him getting too close to see that I've got a nice scorch mark all over my truck. Okay, great. So I think at this point you need to make a keep your cool roll as well. So that would be plus hustle for you here. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, this is plus brains, I think, because you, you're trying to think on your feet. So... So, that, so go to D6. Mm -hmm. Roll two of them. Two different dice. Mm -hmm. Do it each at one. Well, no, 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 just one, plus one for this one of them. Well, I mean, remember what we said, just roll without the modifier, and then you can just add your stat mentally afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, give me, okay, so do that, and then hit roll. Boom. Mm -hmm. And I got a four. Great. So you turn, you turn down that corner, and uh, there is another, another cop car there waiting for you. You suck, Don. Um... <laughs> And that's that's the moment where we're gonna go ahead and, and introduce Brooks Parish to the world. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh so Brooks, where were you when the lights went out on Broadway? And everywhere else. <laughs> um so Brooks is uh Brooks is leaving City Hall. Uh so Brooks, um I'm gonna post a link in the chat. Because I finally realized what the image I had for Brooks in the in my head was, and it's gonna uh, out me as indie wrestling trash, but it's Jake Christ from the Irish Airborne. <laughs> oh boy, uh, who okay. wrestles in like slacks and a vest, and he's just a dirt bag. And like this, when I was make, when Brooks came into being, I was sec I didn't know I was thinking about Jake Christ, but I was. Um, so. <laughs> Now I just want to play Worldwide Wrestling with you, which is another great Powered by the Apocalypse game. I'm in. Call me anytime. I don't do much. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so Brooks is leaving City Hall, uh, because Brooks, as an investigative reporter, uh, who is kind of, uh, not above board, not quite below it yet, but definitely board level, I would call him, um, has uh, some favors that he needs from the mayor of New York, uh, because in his uh, in his research, in his investigating, in his reporting, uh, Brooks has uncovered uh, more than a bit of citywide corruption. That it really would be a shame if using his newfound profile uh, that were to hit the front page. Uh, and so Brooks, in reporting a bunch of other things and trying to figure out. Uh, you know what's going on in New York uh, is asking some questions, asking for some favors, uh, and Brooks is leaving the mayor's office uh, in Manhattan when the lights go out. He's just gotten out of the elevator. Uh, as uh, he's walking outside, and the lights go out, he hears the the flashes and, and everything that goes on. Uh, and Brooks kind of looks down at his hands, 
um, because Brooks is going through some things with his in regards to his own abilities, um, and then realizes that no, this probably I probably had nothing to do with this, but there's a story out there, <laughs> and so he he's getting ready to hit the streets. Okay, uh, where does where is Brooks Paris? Want, where, what is his first impulse? Where does he go? Want to go first? <laughs> I think he goes uptown. He goes uptown. Um, okay, so we're we're really starting to bring the group together, and I I, I think yes. you're you're walking out of um, City Hall, which I Yusuf, if you can chime in and tell me where City Hall is in Manhattan, that would be great because I have no idea. Uh, that's very far down in Manhattan. It's about a hundred blocks from Washington Heights. Um, so uh, it's a, yeah, it's it's about, it's a, about as far away from other Manhattan as you can get. Great, so you got a journey ahead of you, Brooks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, like, you know. You're doing the reverse warriors right now. <laughs> Great. Yes. I, I, I absolutely watched the warriors last night, by the way, in preparation for this. <laughs> Brooks Parish, come out to play. <laughs> um, as, as you're walking out... Great, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, as you're walking out of the uh, city hall, uh, this, like, really old like I, you know he's probably like some sort of uh, alderman or whatever the New York City equivalent of that would be clutches his chest and falls over uh, what do you do Brooks Parish? how many people are around oh you are in City Hall okay there are a lot of people around yes <laughs> okay well I think it might be time to test the gift <laughs> So why don't why don't you tell our viewers uh, a little bit about Brooke Parrish's gift? Okay, so um, Brooks Parrish is, as I mentioned, has come into a bit of a high profile uh, because of what has become known as the Center Street incident. Uh, Brooks, uh, I was down on my luck. It was one of those weeks where, like, I was on deadline and just nothing. I've tried everything. Nothing's coming up. No one will talk to me. Probably because of all the other things that I've done to get people to talk to me. Um, <laughs> And I would come, <laughs> I was coming up on this, I was walking around by, by City Hall, that's where Center Street is, uh, just hoping that I would overhear something. And what I did overhear was a gunshot. Um, and I ran over and found there was a body. Uh, and nothing else, the, our, our killer had already fled the, fled the scene or was never there to begin with. Uh, and Brooks, in this moment of desperation got on his knees and prayed not for this person but for a scoop <laughs> he said god <laughs> i know it's been a while <laughs> and i know listen i know we talked la i know last week was hard <laughs> but if you could one time i need this <laughs> i need someone i need anything that i can write about that i can publish that i can go with um and this person sat up. <laughs> and this person remembered everything. And so Brooks solved a murder. Uh, and I'm not convinced that it wasn't a coincidence. That it was just right place, right time. Like, maybe they weren't as dead as they looked. Um, but enough people were around that think that they might have seen a miracle... <laughs> And Brooks is not the kind of person to disappoint the people. <laughs> so we've just been going with that for a couple of months now. Great. So does and that's a really that's really helped the product placement of Brooks Parish. <laughs> like a lot of people are more willing to publish a miracle. And the person who done did a miracle than they are the guy skulking around in back rooms reporting on stuff that no actual person would actually do to themselves. <sighs> okay, so uh, I kind of, like, exp give me the shot. You know, if this were a movie, what is the shot of Brooks Parrish rushing to this person to try and heal them as they're having a heart attack in City Hall? 
Okay, this person has fallen over there on the ground, clutching their chest. A lot of people are around. Some people are trying to call the call the you know emergency services, but the power's out. Nothing's going through. Everyone is pa- everyone is kind of panicking because they're in their minds. They are about to watch this man probably die. Um, and Brooks, uh, with a flair for the theatric, walks calmly to this man, like he's gliding. Towards this person, it's down on his knees, and I think he hushes the crowd. Um, and he he offers this ostentatious prayer, <laughs> um, to an unspecific god, uh, asking <laughs> that the power would come upon him, and this man might be healed. Uh, because he knows that enough people are around that someone has probably heard of him. And they would be very disappointed if he didn't try. Alright, roll uh, plus soul. Yeah. On my faith healing. <laughs> uh, Don, I want you to know that I rolled a 10. <laughs> Great. Um... <laughs> I think this person literally leaps up uh, and just looks around and he's like, false alarm, I guess, and just uh, walks away. Uh, and I wave and I say, I, you know, I'm glad that this all turned out all right, man. You have a good day. I'm just glad I got to check on you. Um, you know, maybe go, like... Maybe see if the hospitals have some backup generators. Get that checked out. Tell them Brooks sent you. Uh, <laughs> and I think there are now about a couple dozen people in the ha- in the in city hall staring at you very intently and with considerable confusion on their faces. And that's where we cut back to the Rat Brooks King. Brooks echoes that. Yeah. Uh, so the Rat King, you are running down this pitch black tunnel. Uh, and you find yourself at a door that shouldn't be there. Uh, what do you do? And maybe the Rat King, you can give a little uh, backstory about this mysterious door. Well, if there's a door I'm thinking of, it is potentially the biggest break of my sleuthing career in the tunnels. Because after first finding a, a cache of, of government X tech it's kind of set me, that was about uh, maybe 10 years ago, it set me on the, my journey to try and like really figure out what's going on uh, and, and to see how many more of these um, you know, underground laboratories and, and storage units there were. Uh, most of them are hard to find, but they're still you know, findable. And uh, I think a, about a year ago, I, I noticed a door in a tunnel that I hadn't seen before, and I think it was out in um, Long Island City, let's say. And um, like, actually no, all those trains are elevated, hold on. <laughs> uh, it's like, like Grand Central. Um, and I had combed that area over many times, so I, I had no idea there'd be something like that there. I went to go look for it, and uh, on my way there, a train passed in front of me, and I had to duck out of the way. And, when I uh, when it passed, the door was gone. So it's kind of been this ongoing mystery for me, like what is um, behind this door, you know? Um, and also, it's not always in one place. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily geographically located. But I always know I know when I see it. So uh, what do you do now that you've you've found that door? Well, first, can you tell me what Vinny told me? <laughs> oh, saw? yeah. Uh, Vinny saw <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, uh, thousands of rats swarming down those okay. tunnels. And they are right be behind you. <laughs> so I'm also at, like, don't have time to really think about this door. Whether or not I want to go through it. So uh, do, you, do you go uh, through it? Yeah, I, I obviously try and um, gain access. All right. I'm just and I do... And, and I, I would say it's potentially X-Technology, and therefore I might have a bonus with it. 
Uh, yes, you do have a bonus for all all things involving X Tech because of your backstory. Um, I'm just trying to think of. Uh, well, you, you open that door, okay? That was easy. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the open in the door. The door wasn't the problem. Uh, however, you open that door, um, and suddenly, one, you're above ground. Uh, two. Uh, you're at, like, the viewing platform for the Chrysler building. Well, heck. <laughs> uh, however, you still hear all those rats coming. Uh, what do you do? Well, I don't like to be above ground, let's just say. It's not a, not a place of comfort for me. Too much, too much sky, too, much, uh, too many places I can fall. I mean, not even above ground. I'm, like, a thousand feet in the air. Um, can I pretend to be one of the um, uh, a buttresses? <laughs> Are there there are gargoyles in the Chrysler building? Is there? Maybe not. You do have maybe your not, maybe a, you do have your disguise kit. I do have a disguise kit. <laughs> uh, so let me just figure out, just confirm how that that works. Uh, yeah. You have the move, Master of Disguise, in addition to yeah. having, like, how many um, uses of your disguise kit do you have? Um, wait, where does it say that? Uh, it should say, um, oh, I I'll have to look that up in the, in the rule book. That's fine. Just give me one moment. Um, you, did, you don't yeah, have it written sure. down on the, the thing. I guess I didn't write it down. Um, 60, let's go with, like, page 8. That's probably close enough. Um, nope, you're not the honeypot, you are the sleuth. That's right. Um, there, you there's have a three... Oh, no, there's a, fal there's a falcon. <laughs> so you're going to try and pretend to be the falcon? Yeah. Alright, so you do have your, your falcon. disguise kit, and uh, let me just read how Master of Disguise works. I'm going to read the move description out loud. Uh, um... When you take the time to create a convincing disguise for yourself or others, roll plus brains and mark one use of your disguise kit. On the 10 plus, only the most scrutinous examination would reveal a disguised person to be anyone other than who they say they are. On a 7 to 9, it's good but not perfect. The disguised person rolls with something extra for any rolls to convince someone they are who they say they are. Uh, so just really quickly, kind of ex explain to me how you describe yourself, I mean, how you disguise yourself as a falcon on the Chrysler building. Oh, that's easy. Um, so I'm wearing an overcoat, and I um, pick up some nearby uh, discarded, um, just uh, I guess the inside of a, uh, or the inside of labels of like a soda, like soda bottles that kind of have a silvery mm -hmm. pattern to them, and just wrap a bunch of them around my shoulders, and kind of lean out over the edge, kind of precipitously dangling over the chasm of new york and you know just hang on and and hang on for dear life and try and keep as still as possible all right you need to roll plus brains um can you explain the rolling again because it's is it 2d6 yeah 2d6 and then whatever your brain stat is which i think is plus three or plus two um no, it's not even, it doesn't matter i got a 12 oh so. well there you go um <laughs> uh yeah i mean i think what happens is this swarm of rats. I mean, you have never seen this many rats in your life, and if you were someone who was, like, scared or, like, legitimately scared of rats, this would probably freak you the word I'm not going to say out loud out. Uh, they come just pouring out of that door like an ocean uh, onto the, the viewing deck of the Chrysler building. And they are just, you know, you know, like little mice uh, looking around, trying to figure out where you are, where you went. And they just don't seem to notice that you're the, this falcon on top of the Chrysler building, and they slowly start to uh, funnel back into the into the door. What do you do after the last of these rats is gone? Well, I you know brush myself off, uh, take the trash off of my back, um, and try and take stock of my surroundings. You know how the hell did I get? stuck out on top of a building. I was just underground. And uh, not even that, 50 blocks north. There's something up with this X-Tech. 
Yeah, and this that, that sounds like you're investigating a crime scene. I think I am. All right, well, how do you how do you investigate it? What does that look like? Well, I go back to the door. The door okay. is the main, um, you know, point of focus here. Like, how does it work? Like, is it... Do, if, I look, if I look inside, is the tunnel in there? If I... Are the, you know, the hinges normal? Is it, is it... Or is the door itself a, has a tunnel to it? Or is it, like, kind of like a... One side of the wall is one place, and one side, the other side is another. All right, well, that also sounds like you need to roll plus brains, although I'm going to read that move description out loud as well. Um, yeah. uh, okay, where did we go? Here we are. Um, that is... Uh, when snoping out the scene of a recent crime, you can additionally choose to ask these questions. How long ago did the crime... None of these really make sense here, so it would be the normal, the normal ones, which is... Uh, uh, what's the fastest escape route out of here? Is there anything hidden here? Who's in charge around here? Who's the toughest person here? Who's the most vulnerable person in the room? Who knows more than they're letting on? But yeah, you just need to roll plus brains now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing would be how to get out and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I rolled 2d6. I got 10. Plus 2 brains. So you get to ask 3 questions. Uh, okay. Well, the first would probably be in order of importance. Is there any way down from here that doesn't involve going back through that door? I mean, you could just take the elevator down from the Chrysler building. Uh, what time is it? Oh, it's it's daytime. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you're probably going to get some looks since you were recently covered in trash. Uh, but no, you could... wait, how can it be daytime? What do you mean? If we just call the citywide black... Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mom, for that. I needed that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you could you could take the, um, the elevator down. You could take the stairs. Otherwise, the only route back is through that door. So about that door, second question would be... Um... Is there any kind of um, indication of how it works? So I'm trying to figure out which of these questions that would be. And, uh... Who's in charge here? <laughs> Who's in charge here? Um... Maybe. I mean, like, you know, somebody's behind this door. That's true. That's a good question. Uh... I think you see... Like, you, you like, peek your head through the door, okay? And you're back in the tunnel... And then you notice something on the doorknob, which you had not noticed before, which is uh, a um, an engraving of a lizard. Mm. Rats and lizards aren't friends. No, they're not. <laughs> um, and I guess the last question would be... Um, you know, uh, if I know either, well, I guess too broad to know why the the rat mob was chasing me, but did they, are they still inside the tunnel? Are they nearby? Like, if I go back inside? Um, I, I figured that would probably be, uh, uh, is there anything hidden here, maybe? Or, uh -huh. and, and no, you, you think they're gone. You, you hear, like, the last of them scuttling down the opposite end of the tunnel. Okay. Can I do? Can I go back in then? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and where are you going from there once you're back in the tunnel? Well, my my curiosity is peaked. I gotta say, so I I, I follow the mob. I see. I, I want to find out where they're going. My guess is it's the singular singular. Right. He's after me, after me for the deal that went wrong. So I want to figure out, you know, if that's true, and if so, I need to plan my next move. All right, and I think on that note, we're going to cut to uh, Babs Brooklyn, who has just turned a corner in her in her pickup truck. And uh, what color is is Babs's pickup truck? Black. Okay, she's got this. She's got a black pickup truck. She turns a corner. Well, that makes the scorch marks kind of hard to see. Uh, but that also makes okay. sense for the red. Let's red? go with red. Okay, there's a red pickup truck. Um, and suddenly you turn the corner. And there is a cop literally right there at that corner. Like, there is a cop car, two people in it. 
a, a young Hispanic man and an older white guy. Uh, what do you do? I just continue on inconspicuously. Oh, they flash their sirens at you. Oh, they do? Mm-hmm. Well, being law-abiding citizen that I should be, I pull over and um, roll my window down. And wait? And wait. Okay. All right, so the, uh, the, um, the, younger, the younger Hispanic cop, uh, he's got, like, long, uh, long black hair. Uh, he's probably in his, like, early 20s. Um, he has his hand, like, in the position where if he needs to grab his gun, he can go for his gun. Uh, do you do anything as he's walking towards your car? Well, of course I do. I put my hands on the outside of my window, like you're supposed to, both of them, and lean out and somewhat flirtatiously ask him if there's a problem. Ask him if he wants to see your lightning gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like, and uh, ask him well, if he'd like for me to get on my vehicle. Um... And we should probably explain a little something about Babs Brooklyn right there, which is that she is part of a mob war against particular members of the NYPD. Uh, she is like the personal mob hit woman, so to speak, uh, for cops that the, the that La Cosa Nostra has a problem with. I just want to make sure that that's established before this part of the story goes any further. So, uh, the cop is walking up to your car, and he says, uh, well, Yes, ma'am, I'm not sure if you realize you know, what's happening in the city right now, but uh, there's, a, there's a, a total blackout. No, no electricity whatsoever. Um, reports are coming in. Things are, are really bad. And there was an explosion at a substation not far from here, and we're just talking to everybody to make sure they didn't see anything, anything unusual. Uh, did you see anything, ma'am? Actually, I did. Um, about 10 miles back, I saw a, a bright um, flash, and then um, I, I heard an explosion, and I didn't know what to think, so that's one reason why I got in my vehicle to uh, start uh, driving around to check things out, and when I was walking out to my vehicle, I noticed this, uh, this, this black scorch mark on my car, and... Um, I made a couple phone calls and was taking it to my friend Roscoe to see if he couldn't take a look at it for me. Oh no, does Roscoe have mob connections? Is, is everybody mob connected in this game? Anyways, okay, uh, that sounds like you need to roll, um, roll 2d6 and then add your smooth stat, which is, um, let me pull that up really quickly. Uh, my smooth was zero. So just roll, right? roll straight 2d6 if that's the case. Let me just check, uh... Uh, I, you, well, you never sent me your stats, but yeah, it was your smooth zero? Yes. Okay, what did you roll? Uh, a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. You mean? <laughs> good. Um. Don't fall apart. Uh, I think as you were driving, you kind of just had the lightning gun sitting in the passenger seat. You were so in, like, shock of everything that happened after you caused the New York City blackout of 1977 that you didn't put your lightning gun in, like, a, a concealable position. And the cop looks over, it clearly doesn't believe a word you're saying, and then sees this absurd contraption uh, in your passenger seat. And he says, ma'am, what is that? Uh, well, well, what it is, it is, you know, the 4th of July was just a, a week or so ago. And um, me and a couple friends went went to a party, and this is just some gag gift that I, I got. Would you would you like to take a look at it? Feel feel free. You know, it's it's just um, a little a gag gag gift for adults that, that we were just uh, that I I won as a drawing because I had the best uh, uh, costume for for the Fourth of July. Ma'am, I'm going gonna, gonna to need to see a permit for that. Oh, it's not a real gun, officer. It, it's just a, it's just a toy gun. It, it's not even a toy gun. It's just a gag, gag gun. It's it's. Ma'am, I'm going to need you to get out of your vehicle. Yes, sir. 
Coach me, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, let me know. What do you do? I shoot him with my semi-automatic. <laughs> oh, no. You have a... You, you, oh, God. Okay. You shoot him with your actual gun. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is smoke his ass. When you take aim and shoot at an enemy at range, roll plus hustle. On a 10 plus, you have a clear shot. Deal your damage. On a 7 to 9, choose one. You have to move to get the shot, exposing someone, often yourself, to danger, to danger, deal your damage, or you have to take what you can, get, uh, take what you can get, deal one harm damage. So roll, roll plus hustle. So my hustle's a one, so put a one there in D6. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's two D6 okay. plus one. Sorry, guys, I'm new at this. <laughs> You're fine. Five. Oh, no, no. Uh, I think by the time you have, like, even before you can reach for your gun, he has his gun pointed at you. Uh, is Ma'am, if you move one more time, I am going to shoot. Uh, what do you do? Definitely not going to freeze like I am right now. <laughs> Come on, Brooks, what do I do? <laughs> um... Oh crap! I don't know. I, I will, say, officer. Let me explain where I got this from. Ma'am, I need you to get out of the vehicle now and put your hand behind your head. If I have to ask again, this will get ugly. And the other cop has got out of the car too, and he has his gun out, and he is coming around the other side of your vehicle. Okay, I'm, I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out, asking them at the same time. Let me explain the situation to you. And I think that's where we cut to uh, to uh, um, Buck Tussy. Yeah, get Roscoe back in here. <laughs> uh, Buck, after you lost all that Billy beer, where did you go next? Um, well, before I tell you, I want to clarify that uh, Golden Earring did Radar Love. Yes. And American uh, American Woman was by the Guess Who. Okay. So, <laughs> it was still, but now I'm listening to Rhinestone Cowboy. Okay, great. <laughs> Very apropos. Um, are you, well, are guess, you walking here? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen. You know, I'm trying out for fiddler on the on on the roof. Um, no, I probably um, I got to go back to Tammy and tell her the bad news that because we were all really excited about uh, the Billy Beer, um, because uh, I love I love Jimmy Carter, but but but. And Roscoe loves Jimmy Carter, but like Tammy loves Jimmy Carter, so she's she's she's, she's going to be really bummed. So yeah, I would go I would go down to my uh, uh, let's see here where where whereabouts is Babs? She like out in the boonies? She's at basically in Long Island, and you were in, in like up North Manhattan, like uptown Manhattan. Okay, all right. Um, my hotel's like Midtown. Okay. Right, that works. Yeah. So, so Buck is not does not have like a permanent residence in New York. He is he is oh, staying no, at a hotel. No. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm staying in a hotel, like you know, kind of extended. I've got enough money that, you know, I mean, it's 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 not nice. I mean, this is like New York in the in the seventies. It's not right. You know, priced it's like out. A, a midnight Midnight Cowboy Hotel. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, it's just it's just. It's, fucking run down like midtown the hotel you know where tammy's just hanging out so yeah i drive i drive green tammy to the hotel with roscoe in tow all right so uh you get to the the hotel and you recognize a car parked outside of the hotel that you haven't uh -oh. seen since you were in north carolina tell me a little uh bit about your crewman's ride oh man um he drove um, he drove a Chevette. Was it a Chevette or a Chevelle? It was a Chevette. I can't remember what they're called. He drove, I'm, I'm, b believe it or not, I'm not, like, I'm not a car guy. Like, I'm just playing a car guy. Like, in, in real life, I know nothing about cars. Uh, yeah, so, um, he drives, he drives a, oh, no, no, what was the fucking, uh, he drives an El Camino. And, uh, and, uh. Yeah, it was like it was like brown. So like he, you know, he was he was a crew chief and he did okay, right? But he's not like he's not a racer like me, right? Like he was like he was like he was like the money man, you know. Um 
and it wasn't that much money because you, you know i wasn't like richard petty i was that dick trickle level guy you know like intermittent winner um yeah so it's just like a brown el camino parked outside all right what do you do when you see this uh brown el camino uh well i put it in part and i look at roscoe that's it uh my crew chief's name is jay okay uh, roscoe that's that's jay's car did he follow us up here i, I don't know buck I, I, I didn't expect to see that car here in, in manhattan well he's gonna fucking kill me if he sees me why don't you go on in there and just like he'll he'll just be mad at you like he like he'll be furious with me i mean i ain't scared of nothing but i gotta know i gotta know what to expect yeah so this definitely sounds like you need to you're going to be doing getting what you want okay um which is when you have leverage and try to seduce or manipulate someone, tell them what you want and tell them what you want and roll plus smooth. Uh, okay. On a ten plus, they do what you want and pick two. On a seven to nine, they do what you want and pick one. They act immediately. They do not demand immediate payment. They perform especially well. They are happy with the bargain. So, what is the so, what what leverage? What can you offer to Roscoe here? Well, I mean, I'm in his I'm his employer, and I know that I'm a good socialist in real life, but this is not like how things work. It, um, but I want to point out that I am still in the driver's seat, so I can add my car's looks to my role. Okay. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> like he's just he's just so dazzled by, by by Green Tammy as everybody is. Okay, great. Um, and Green Tammy is customized, so that bumps her looks up to two. So I'm going to bump up to four because okay. my smooth is two. So okay. two dice. Oh yeah. All right. So I got a fifteen in total. So this is not a problem. Great. I think like. Roscoe might be a little bit in love with Buck Tussie. Uh, That's fine. Yeah, and uh, Roscoe's like, I, you know, I can't say no to you, Buck. All right, I'll go in there and do it. And uh, right. Roscoe gets out of the car. He looks at the at the Camino, kind of shakes his head a little bit. He's like, what the fuck am I getting myself into right now? And then he, he, he walks into the building. Um, and then you hear a gunshot. Oh, no. And Tammy... Like jumps out of the first floor window with a with your sawed off shotgun and it's like oh, run in hell to your car right now. <laughs> Tammy, Tammy, what the hell's going on? I don't know, Buck. J Jay showed up, and I just I couldn't help myself. Uh, you had the gun in the closet. He had that look in his eye, that look I can't stand when he would criticize how I was doing my hair, and I just <laughs> took a shot at him. Did you kill him? I know I missed. We we need to go right now. <laughs> well, we can't leave Roscoe there. All right. Well, what do you do? Because Roscoe is still in that building. Oh God. Uh, I'm gonna run in after Roscoe. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the shoddy and I'm gonna run in after Roscoe. All right. Because uh, Roscoe's my friend. All right. So you 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 bust into the uh, into the lobby of this hotel and you see Jay. Tell me a little bit about what Jay looks like. Um, Jay is Jay. Kind of looks like a young Conway Twitty. So he's kind of what young Conway <laughs> Twitty looks like. Yeah, like uh, think like think like sideburns. Okay, like, great. All right. Yeah, um, and uh, he dresses uh like slightly ostentatiously, right? Like 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 in a really tacky way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So uh, he might be the actual rhinestone cowboy. Right, yeah, like you know, not like not like garish, but like just he dresses cityfied. Okay. Right? Oh, kind of sleazy. <laughs> All right, so uh, you okay? I am looking at a picture of young Conway Twitty right now, and I know exactly what Jay looks like. Okay. Uh, so there's Jay, and Jay's got a heavy with him. This big. Big burly fella, built like okay. uh, built. He looks a little bit like Rick Rude. Oh man! Oh, okay. <laughs> so wow. we've got young Conway Twitty and, and Rick Ru Rick Rude basically in a suede suit. Uh, and and Jay's got just a hand cannon pointed at Roscoe, and then he sees you running in with a shotgun and says, "Well, hello, Buck." <laughs> All right, let me let me ask you a question. Uh, uh -huh. Does this count as ignore the crowd, where I'm working under pressure and everything's on the line? Only I can overcome the obstacle. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
okay, then I'm going to roll with something extra, which I think is like just like a plus one forward. Yeah, uh, no, right? it's, uh, no, it's um, you roll with three dice instead of two, and you take oh, the best shit. two. That's sick. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower my shoddy at the two, and I'm gonna say, Jay, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't want to shoot you. We were friends once, and I know things have gone wrong, but just put down the gun, give me Roscoe, we'll leave, and we ain't gotta talk about this again. You know, I didn't take kindly to what happened with you and Tammy. Now, I don't blame you. It was a moment of weakness, but it was a moment of weakness born out of love, and I'm sure that somewhere inside you, you can understand that. So please... Don't make me pull the trigger, because I will if I have to defend my friends. Oh, well, that sounds like getting what you want, and the leverage is you'll kill him if he does. Well, you know what? Actually, this is... Uh, there's an actually a move for this in this game, which is uh, get in their face. Okay. Uh, which is when you attempt to get someone to act through violence or threat of violence, roll plus might. Uh, on oh, shit. Yeah, on a 10 plus, you choose two, and then the DJ chooses one. On a 7 to 9, you choose one, and then the DJ chooses one. They don't force you to carry out your threat. They give you what you want or what they think you want. They don't try to deceive you. You deal them one harm. They flee or otherwise get out of the way. They offer you an, an alternative. You avoid any repercussions. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to roll my three. I've got a zero in might. Okay. So. And... And you take the best two. Oh, boy. That's really not good. <laughs> So uh, I rolled a one, a two, and a three for a total <laughs> of five. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm looking at the moves here. Um, so I think uh, at that point, uh, Rick Rude, uh, not Rick Rude. I'm sorry, Jay. We're gonna have to name name uh, Rick Rude in a second. Um, anyways, Jay. Moves the hand cannon away from uh, Roscoe and points it at you and says, I don't forgive that easy, Buck, and pulls the trigger. Oh, no! Uh, right. You take uh, two harm. Ah, oh, man, okay. Uh, and while that happens, uh, Rick Rude grabs Roscoe and rushes off to a different part of the, of the motel, uh, and Jay follows him. All right. Well, all right. I've been shot in the shoulder. Um, you know, it's not good, but uh, you know, it's 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 more than a flesh wound. Yeah, you're, you're uh, bleeding pretty pretty decent, and uh, I, I think that's the moment where we have to, to cut to Buck Parish, or not to Buck Parish, to Brooks Parish. All right. All right. So Brooks, you are in the in in, in literally in City Hall. You have maybe just uh, saved somebody from having a heart attack, and there's there's definitely no maybe at this point. And the crowd is staring at you in wonder. Uh, what do you do? Man. I think Brooks is uncomfortable with the attention for the first time in his life. Uh, <laughs> everyone's looking at him. Uh, the, the first time that this happened, Brooks did not know how many people saw him. Uh, this time he is, I am acutely aware <laughs> that something just happened. And Brooks is far interested in uh, getting to the bottom of this of this blackout so he can you know, so he can have another story than standing around here and and be focused upon. Uh, and so I think Brooks uh, Brooks has connections in City Hall, and I think what I want to do is I want to ask uh, I want to ask somebody if, if this was planned or, or if, if they knew anything like, hey, are we like are we testing something? Are there, are there, were there flaws in the power grid? Like, was this supposed to happen to kind of like get a lead? Okay, so that is give me a contact at City Hall beside the mayor that you would have there. Just, just make somebody up. Because you have connections, yeah, that's um, your thing. Uh, I, I think one of my connections is uh, I don't know, like what who what would you what would you call like like a 
a, like a public works uh, like administrator or something like that someone that was like in, in charge of like power grid and like upkeep and stuff like that or like managing that like the public utilities commissioner maybe yeah that guy i say this as someone who works for a utility company so yeah that is an actual thing uh okay cool i, I figured it was i just don't know names for things sure yeah okay so describe the public utility commissioner of new york city uh in 1977 sure uh, this is clearly a made-up person i'm like the actual mayor yeah um so so jamie and i go way back uh jamie is one of these people that uh in the beginning uh when i was trying to get rid uh ran with the, the group that brooks was cover the brooks that brooks was really covering uh he was deep in the art scene uh like he he was one of the band like brooks used to write about his shows and stuff like that and he went legit years ago uh, Brooks would say he got boring, but uh, he he went from being a part of like the the crowd that Brooks would like go around with and like do do all the dumb shit that Brooks would write about with him, and he eventually decided like oh this isn't this isn't my life anymore I can't do this and went legit like you know got his life together worked his way up the ladder and, and now Jamie Run is the uh, public works administrator for New York City. Okay, so in in order to get to his office, you're going to have to get out of the foyer of City Hall. And uh, um, there are a lot of people who are, like, begging you now to come, like, lay your hands on their family members. Uh, What do you do? Brooks lies about... I I think I lie about the extent of the gift. Uh, Like, listen, uh, I I would love to come help you. I I would really enjoy, like... You know, being able to do what I do and help people and, and heal people is, is a real, it's a joy that I have that I get to bring to the people. Uh, but unfortunately, what I've learned about this and, you know, the all of the time that I've been doing this and, you know, all of this, that I, I can only do it so often and I I really don't have any uh, any juice left right now. So I, I have to go. Um, the mayor's probably going to want to know that I was here. And like, I just need to go back to the offices for a little while, uh, check some things out. We just need to, you know, you can't just go around uh, and, and use this power that I have, you know, un, unattended. Uh, you, there have to be checks. There have to be balances. And so, you know, you, I, I gotta go. I'm a step back. <laughs> okay, so that sounds like you're trying to keep your cool and using your charm and social graces to... Uh... <laughs> Yes. To get out of the situation, I just want to make sure that you don't have any particular moves as a Gonzo journalist that help you here. Uh, Let me make sure that I don't. Yeah. Um, no, because I'm not. Off, I'm not off the record, and I'm definitely not writing about this, so I cannot make anyone famous. Yeah. Ooh, so you ooh, need to can... roll plus plus smooth right now. All right. Luckily, Brooks is incredibly smooth. That's an eleven. All right. Um, I think people. They, they leave you alone, not because they actually believe you, but because they're a little bit scared of you. Uh, they're just kind of looking at you like you might be a somewhat divine figure. Like, if you were someone who had seen the, like, the, you know, the, the, the Virgin Mary in a piece of toast or something. Uh, but, you know, actually saw the Virgin Mary instead. Um, so you get to go, you get, you get away, people are just staring at you slack-jawed as you leave. Uh, and you make your way to, you said his name was Jamie, what was his last name? Oh, man, I didn't give him the last name. Oh. Uh. Oh, he doesn't have to have a last name. Yeah, this is, he, I wouldn't use that. I would call him Jamie. <laughs> sure, so you get to Jamie's office, and Jamie used to be a rocker. What kind of, like, slightly subversive rock music is, is Jamie blasting in his city, his city hall <laughs> office? Jamie is still, is like, oh, man... I have to check time periods on this. It's, I, I mean, I think it's probably I think it's probably like Jamie loved Hendrix, and so like it's probably still like uh, Are You Experienced or something like that. Okay, great. So now you need to roll. Um, in order to use your connections, I'm going to read how that works. Uh, okay, because I forgot to know. <laughs> Whether on the streets, in the clubs, or among the rich and famous, you know people, and people know you. When you reach out to an old friend for information, roll plus smooth. On a, pl- on a 10 plus, you know just the guy, and the DJ will give you some useful info. On a 7 to 9, you know a guy, but the info will cost you. Okay, I'm rolling. That's a 10. 
All right. Uh, so you 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 make it into um, into Jamie's office, and he's blasting. You know, are you experienced? You know, so he's kind of just sitting there playing air guitar to it, not really working like he should be. Jamie's Jamie's not the hardest yeah. worker. Uh, and he looks at me and says, "Brooks, what what are you doing here?" <laughs> Uh, listen, hey, um, there's just, you know, I had a thing out in the lobby. Uh, I, since I was in the area, I uh, figured out... What, 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 what sort of thing did you have in our lobby? Um, so, do you remember a couple of months ago that story that I wrote about the Center Street kill, the Center Street shooting? Uh, the one where you were completely full of shit. Yeah, I, I do remember that one. Yeah, so I did that again. Excuse me? Did 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 what again? A guy had a heart attack in the lobby hands on him and now he didn't have a heart attack. I Brooks, ha- have you been dropping acid without me again? I mean, I can only do it without you now, square. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what what do you need? I don't have time for your your bullshit, Brooks. <laughs> Did you not see the thing where all the lights went out? Uh, what do you think I... Uh, I'm the public utility commissioner. Of course I know that the electricity is out. I, listen, I know that. You know that you know that. But I need to talk to you about why that happened. I, if you if we knew why it happened, Brooks, don't you think the lights would be back on by now? No, because I've seen what a shit job you do. <sighs> Look, uh... There, there was a substation. It blew out up in Long Island or, you know, Brooklyn, one of the places nobody ever fucking visits. Uh, that's all we know. Uh, there was, there's a report coming in about, you know, the cops. They have some woman uh, in, a, in a red pickup truck. Uh, but that, uh, that's honestly, that's all I know right now. Um, if you, if you okay. want to know more, you're going to need to head to, 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 to the BQE. All right. Uh, listen, if this ever gets too much to, for you. Uh, you know someone in high places now. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Jamie. I, I'll call you again. <laughs> I, I've known you in very high places, Brooks. They weren't pretty. Yeah, but, like, this is good now. Like, we got a thing going. All right, and I think that's... That is where... Let's go out to the lobby. Look at how they look at me. <laughs> uh, do, you, do, you, wait, do you drag Jamie out to the lobby with you? I... I, I Absolutely. Okay, great. So we, we get this scene, and you, you're like... I, I'm not even going to make you roll here, because I just like this image too much. You fucking... You drag Jamie out to the to the lobby, and there are just still people just like kind of like hanging around, oh, no. waiting for you to come out. Uh, and, and Jamie just kind of turns his head and looks at you and is like, what in the hell is happening right now? And that's where we cut to the Rat King. Uh... So, the Rat King, you're attempting to, to follow the, the horde of rats. That is correct. Alright, I'm trying to figure out what specific move that would be. Um, that to, to me, that feels like either keep your cool, which would be, you know... Uh, Trying to keep up with the rats, basically, or scoping out a scene by being able to keep being able to still follow them. Uh, uh, Buck, as a powered by the apocalypse expert, which one do you think makes more sense there? You, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was looking up more music. Uh, could you repeat the? Uh, could you repeat the 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 question again so he's trying to keep up with the horde of rats does that sound like keep your cool or scope out a scene um uh, keep your cool i would think yeah i would think so too and that definitely sounds like hustle to me uh so you think you can make a, a hustle roll a rat king where that's 2d6 plus hustle uh yeah 2d6 plus hustle okay i got 10 uh, all right so i think uh, you are are just uh, you're behind them, and you can hear them, and you always know where they're going. But you're you're they don't seem to notice you. You're you're sneaking up behind them, and you keep going down tunnels, and they're taking you down tunnels you've never been down before. Uh, 
there is like moss and shit growing through the walls. There is like water leaking from the ceilings. Like, like there is like at this point like water kind of leaking onto you, and you think maybe at this point you might be underwater. Um, and they they keep going and they keep going, and then suddenly you don't hear them anymore. Um, and then you reach a wall, a dead end in the tunnels, and there's just like crack that you could crawl through. Uh, just big enough for you to get through. Uh, what do you do? Hmm. I think I gotta go through that crack. I'm, my interest is getting the better of me. Alright, so... I'm going in there. The Rat King doesn't shy away from danger. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you crawl, you crawl through the tunnel, and then you are in this, like, legitimate cavern. Uh, there is, like, a waterfall... Uh, this, like, you know, cistern, I guess, is kind of formed in this, like, crevice underneath what I, I, and I don't know my New York City well enough. Is it the East River on the, I guess the East is on the East, and then the Hudson's on the other side? Uh, yeah, that'd be the East River, yeah. So, yeah, you're under the, you're pretty sure you're under the East River at this point. Uh, almost in, in, in the Dirty Jurors. Uh, well, and they're, more like, uh, Queens. Oh, right, wait, yeah. yeah, I am so bad at, at Cardinal <laughs> Directions. Yes, you are basically in Queens at this point. Jesus. Just just remember that, that New York City is the only city with enough self-regard where the river on the east side <laughs> is called the East River. <laughs> um, and in, in there, uh, there are, like, potentially tens of thousands of rats scurrying around in this this massive room. I mean, we're talking like the size of a football field uh, area uh, underneath Queens, apparently. Uh, near Queens, underneath the East River. Uh, and then there's like this little island in the center. And in the center, uh, you see the singular, uh, which can we, can we describe what he looks like a little bit more? Sure. Um, so, um, if you take a glance at the singular... Uh, at a glance, they look just like a maybe a person because they're about the same size, same height. But the closer you get, the more it becomes evident that it's actually a person isn't a person. They shouldn't be moving the way they move. They they undulate and rise, and um, as kind of ceaseless noise makes up their their body. It's never it's never a solid. It's it's always shifting and and um, and changing. So, um, you know, from my experience, from my good experience, or I wouldn't say good, but my um, you know well of experience with singular, I, I'm aware that it is not a human, but a colony of rats all clinging to each other and who kind of share a common consciousness. Um, maybe even a soul. I, with my gift and ability to talk to Vinny, means that I can also converse with with them and with this being. Who uh, sometimes we have good days, but this past few these past few weeks haven't been so good. So we're not in great terms. I kind of expected I would meet meet him here, but um, you know, uh, I I approach cautiously, but I know my options are, are not good right now. Well, I, I also want to advise that in the center of this island, and this island is, is pretty far away, like, like, they don't see you yet. Um, oh, the, okay. rat, the rats don't, and the singular I doesn't. I seem to be, like, waiting for me. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's uh, kind of, like, grand gesture. Uh, the, um, <laughs> in, the, in the center of the island, the singular is actually meeting with two people, like, people, people. Um, and you, you recognize one of them as the commissioner of the of police for the, the city. Uh, okay, and then also Brooks Parish. Uh, you want to chime in here, real because I want I want your feedback on this character. Tell me a little bit about the most notorious mob boss in New York City right now. Oh man, <clears throat> it's in New York City. Uh, man, oh, man, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good name for him. Nah, it's it's definitely just it's just it's just Big Tony. It's Big Tony. Uh, okay, great. Big Tony. All right. Like, his here's the thing about Big Tony. His name is Reggie. 
his name is Reginald. He goes by Big Tony. He's a bit less of a, of a sounding name. Um, and so, and so he, he decided to like, you, you know, when he was coming up, uh, he just started telling people when, when he would work with them or, or when he would, would go and like, you know, break someone's kneecaps. And he's like, you tell him Big Tony was here. And everyone just kind of assumed like, yeah, it's Big Tony. Um, and so he has been working uh, a, a racket around uh, mostly Manhattan. He's starting to branch out up into, up into uh uh, over in the Brooklyn, up into the Bronx, uh, but he's been wor- he's been working uh, a racket around here, mostly like protection kind of stuff like that. You know, uh, it'd be a shame if uh, something were to happen to you, kind of thing. Uh, for I think Big Tony's been working for about four or five years now. Um, okay, and- so uh, you you so back to the Rat King then. You you see Big Tony and the police commissioner. Uh, standing in this island in this this cistern underneath uh, the East River, um, and the Rat King, in his kind of undulating, writhing arms, hands each of them these like, they, it almost from a distance looks like paint cans, but they're they're clearly sloshing a little bit, and something is is coming out over the edges, and he hands them to the to those people, and then they shake their hands. Uh, what do you do? Um, I want I want Vinny to go and try and um, pretend he's one of the rats. Oh, this not, is the rat, not the Rat King's colony, but mm-hmm. like you know, one of his followers. Um, get up close and see what's in those cans. Uh, so that definitely sounds like keep your cool, and I'm gonna make okay. you roll for your your rat here since you guys share that kind of Come bond. On. Okay, um, he's the Rat King. <laughs> That's hello, <well. laughs> hello, Brian. <laughs> That's my son, Dad. Um, okay, so that means I think you need to. Gosh, I don't even know what you would need to do here. Uh, I, I. We're gonna make you roll plus soul, because this is like you you using your psychic bond with your rat uh, to try and navigate this perilous situation to not get noticed as someone who's not one of us, one of us, one of us. Sure. Okay. Ooh, got a seven. That's a pass. Okay. Uh, so I think here's how I think this works. Because um, well, on a partial success, it's still a success. Okay. Uh, Vinny, Vinny makes it through this like sea of rats, and Vinny seems to be navigating through this like without you really even understanding how he's doing it, like how he's like able to get to where he needs to go. Uh, and the uh, the police commissioner and, and Big Tony, they've They've already left. They've taken like paddle boats out of this cistern, and they're rolling, you know, through some some service, you know, sewage tunnel. Uh, that secret nobody else seems to apparently know about, but them and the and the singular. And uh, Benny like is like riding on tops of rats on the water to get to this island. Um, and then he gets to the island, and you see a little bit of what was sloshing over the side, and Benny like peeks over, uh, and and Benny. Vinny sees New York City in, like, the 1950s. Uh, like, he's, like, seeing, like, people in, like, zoot suits, you know, their hair all slicked back. It's, like, it's, like, Harlem at the Apollo, 1950s. Uh, and then he gets back to you, and he conveys all this information to you, and you think you're basically scot-free, uh, and that's when you realize the singular, the singular is looking, like, right at where you are. Uh, what do you do? Hmm. I wonder, um, I mean, my reaction is try to, my, my reaction is try and beat it. <laughs> okay, that definitely sounds like keep your cool and hustle then. Yeah. Like trying, trying to get out of this tunnel before you can get snared back up with the rats. Yeah. All right. Uh, wait, which one, which one do I do? Plus uh, two d six plus your hustle. Okay. Um, eight. Okay. Um, I'm having to look at the list of, of ways that I can complicate this. Um. 
Because no, like, die rolls are too good right now. The <laughs> you're rolling better than Babs. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the way that Powered by the Apocalypse games work, and one of the things I really like about them is as the GM, I actually have a really limited selection of moves that I can choose from. Yeah. Like, anytime I'm doing something, I'm choosing from a list of things that I'm allowed to do. Uh. Okay, I, I think you're like crawling out of the tunnel, and uh, it was a, it was a tight fit to get through the first time, and for just like for whatever reason, there's like something stuck on you, like that's keeping you stuck in there, uh, and in order to untangle it in time, you would probably have to like leave it behind, and it's it's your uh, your remaining uh, disguise kits. Damn it! I love those. What do you do? <laughs> Leave them behind. All right. Uh, so you get it, and you just what you know, just like run like hell down the 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 tunnels. Yeah. Uh, where just to kind of frame things for the next scene, where do you think you're heading? Well, as, as low as I am to um, to uh, go onto the surface. It might be a good idea to try and get some fresh air for once. So I, I see if the, I, I find a, on my way out, I find a service stair slash ladder up, up above ground. Um, and it, 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 I wind up on Roosevelt Island. Okay, great. Um, I actually had a friend who used yeah. to live on Roosevelt Island. Um, oh, that's been weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, or wait, not, not Roosevelt Island. He lived on, um, where is Governor's Ball at? Governor's Island. Oh, yeah, God, I'm the worst New Yorker, because I don't live there anymore. I've forgotten everything. Um, I went to a Super Bowl party on Roosevelt Island. It was a weird place to have a party. <laughs> yes. It's uh, a cool place. All uh, right. Yeah, I, 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 I surface just just outside of the abandoned mental asylum. Oh, God. Okay, um, <laughs> And uh, try and get my bearings and figure out what to do next with the knowledge I've gained. Okay. Uh, on, on try, I'm just trying to figure out who I want to I want to cut to here, and I, I think I just I, I really want to know what's going on with 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 Buck Tussie. Uh. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, um, I do have plain hurt, which means that I'm rolling with something extra for all my might and hustle scenes for the remainder of the scene because I've taken two harm. Yep. Uh, it's like I'm 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 unstoppable, um, I'm robust. <laughs> um, so they ran, I guess, out into like the hallway. Uh, Jay and uh, Jay and the muscle guy. Yeah, and they okay. have Roscoe. They have Roscoe. That's no good. Um, I've got no choice, but I've got to I've got to follow him. All right, Roscoe, well, I'm coming to get you, pal. Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he's, he's, he's Borg-9, so he's right. like, Buck! Buck! <laughs> I, can't, uh, I can't do the, like... If I try to do that kind of, like, deep, raspy voice, I will just be Billy Bob Thornton in Sling Blade. Buck! Okay. Um, <laughs> God damn. Uh, Briars, okay. Are... Alright, I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna zip around the hall, and I'm gonna... I'm gonna take a shot, like, at, at, at whichever Jay or the muscle guy that I see first, like, going down the hall. Okay, so I think because of like you know like being true to where the fiction is, I think you're gonna have to keep your cool to catch up with them because you did just okay. get shot. I uh, can do that. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Keeping my cool is hustle in this case. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Let's do my hustle. Oh, and I get to roll three dice too. Yep. So good. Uh, oh shit! I just lost my closed out my. Uh, there we go. Got to bring my dice back up. Okay, three dice. Roll top two plus. So I got a nine. Okay, so, uh, God, uh, I think I think you turn the corner, and um, you 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 turn the corner, and actually, Roscoe's putting up a fight. Roscoe is a fighter. Yeah, Roscoe <laughs> is a fighter. And uh, Roscoe, Roscoe has managed to slow 
he has managed to slow uh, Rick Rude down. The ravishing, okay. the ravishing Rick Rude, and uh, yeah. uh, you have a you have a choice here. You can either try and tackle Rick Rude and get uh, Roscoe free, or you can take a shot at Jay, who is like at a, at the door and ready to leave his buddy behind. Oh man. Uh, shit, I gotta save Roscoe. Alright, so that sounds like, uh, you're about to, uh, god, let me pull up this, I think it's kick some ass. Okay, uh, hell yeah, I'm gonna kick some ass. Yes, it is, it is kick some ass, if I can get to that page, uh, or it's deliver a beatdown, I'm sorry, but still, hell yeah. um, when you swing at somebody with the intent of physically hurting them, roll plus might. On a 10 plus, you deal your damage to the enemy and choose one. On a 7 to 9, you deal your, am- you deal your damage to the target or choose one. You avoid any counterattack, deal great harm, deal one stun harm, disarm your target, blind hold or otherwise disable your target, give or take something your, har- your target is holding or wearing, wink wink, uh, push, pull, or otherwise move your target where you want them. Alright, let's, let's roll well here. I did not. <laughs> I got a five. Well, you get to roll. Did did you roll something extra? Yes, I did. Okay. Two, three, and one. Again. Uh, so I think Rick Rude sees you come. We really needed to name him something. Uh, God, what is this guy's name? Because I can't just call him Rick Rude this entire time. Uh, this is just, uh... (laughs) Impolite dick. (laughs) So yeah. It's Dick. It's Dick. It's great. It's Dick. Dick. Uh... Dick had, like, Roscoe in, like, a chokehold. He, like, hears you, like, bellowing down the corner, yelling, you know, Roscoe! Like, this, this is full, you know, 70s genre cinema at this point. Um, <laughs> and he just, like, shoves Roscoe against the wall and then picks you up and, like, body slams you. Uh, <sighs> take one stun harm. Okay. All right. All right, I'm winded. Oh. <laughs> Let's um, see here. What do you do? Um, is he, like, on top of me? He, like, press-slammed you. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna lean into the Rick Rude thing here at this point. That's fine, that's fine. He's, he's, he's like, a pro wrestler. Um, <laughs> wait. I'm really going, like, full Joe Don Baker, like, incompetency <laughs> here. Um, do I still have, do I, do I still have my shotgun? Mm-hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna shoot him. All right. Like, these guys are trying to kill me. Um, three dice. Uh, that's that's might again, right? Uh, no, that's hustle. Okay. All right. Uh, that's that's better. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's much better. All right, I got a uh, total of fifteen. <laughs> Great. So uh, uh, on a ten plus, you have a clear shot. Deal your damage. So what is your damage with your sawed-off shotgun? You know what? I don't know, but I know where it is. I feel like I feel like it's two. I think it might be three. Oh uh, man, if it's three, that's even better. Either way, this dude is dead. It's just a yeah. matter of how dead he is. Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, the shotguns are messy. Am I correct about that? Oh yeah, they are. Yes, yeah, so, so <laughs> sawed off is uh, three harm close reload messy. Uh so. yeah, you have splattered this guy's insides all over this uh, this. Dirtbag Midtown Hotel. Oh God! All right, um, I'm a little freaked out by that <laughs> because I've never actually shot someone, right? Like I've shot sure. like, uh, you know. And honestly, this is probably more like Tammy's gun than it is mine. Um, so, like, I start screaming like, "Oh God!" Right? Uh, <laughs> oh God! Roscoe like runs up to you and just puts you in like a big old bear hug. Okay. Goddamn, Roscoe, we gotta get out of here. Uh, you don't gotta tell me twice, Buck. Let's go. <laughs> Tammy's in the car. Come on, she's in Green Tammy, and I'm gonna go <laughs> run out, run out to Green Tammy, and uh, I'm oh. gonna fire it up, and I'm gonna peel off into the night. All right. So I think that's where we gotta we gotta go to back to to Babs. Uh, Babs Brooklyn, you have you are out of your car. And there are two cops with their firearms pointed directly at you. 
Uh, mm-hmm. They are wanting you to put your hands behind your head so they can cuff you and take you to uh, to City Hall. Or to, not to City Hall, why would they take you to City Hall? To jail, to Rikers, <laughs> or whatever the women's version of Rikers would be. Uh, so what what do you do? Well, what do I do? A woman's always prepared, especially one with connections in the mob and mm-hmm. who's always watching her back. So, as I'm going to put my hands behind my head, into my leather jacket, which hidden up in the collar, is a stun gun, in which I'm able to... Do you have a stun gun, or do you have a baton? Oh, I thought I had both. Hold on. You have mace, and you have a have you have a mace. billy club or something like that. So I mace both of the officers. Do that. All right. Mission. So that is deliver a beat. Oh wait, what was the question? I don't know. Am I allowed to do that? Oh yes, you are absolutely allowed to mace them. That's like I was giving you that opportunity to either use your mace or your billy club here. I was kind of hoping you would go full daredevil and just start kendo sticking everybody. Um, I guess he didn't use a Not kendo stick. Well, it's a tonfa, but still. Um, okay, so uh, so that's deliver a beatdown. When you swing at somebody with the intent of physically hurting them, roll plus might. Uh, on a 10 plus, you deal your damage to the enemy. Well, yeah, so just roll plus might. Also, I am going to say that you need to roll with something less here. So you have to roll three dice and choose the least of the two. Uh, all right. So to be, to be fair to the fiction, because you're surrounded by cops with guns pointed at you. Not this. Can I have um, Yusuf roll for me since he's good at it? Or, or wait, Ian's gone. There's Ian. Yusuf. So what's your might stat? Yeah, what do you want me to roll? My mat is my might is two. So three d six plus two, but choose the least two dice. Because she's rolling with something less because she's at a disadvantage in this sequence. Okay. I got two, six, and six. Two what? Two, six, and six. So that's eight plus two, ten. You got a ten. Uh, so, yeah, I think the older, like, the older white cop is, like, about to, like, slap the cuffs on you. And that's when you pull the mace out of your, like, leather jacket, just spray it right in his eyes. And mm-hmm. then you have this wonderful move called Super Bad that I'm going to read out loud. Uh, which is going to come in ha- really handy here. Which is, when you kill, incapacitate, disable, or otherwise violently eliminate an opponent, you, make an, you may make an immediate follow-up attack against a different valid opponent. So, Buck, I, I want your, like reading of that here, does that mean the other attack automatically succeeds, or that she can make another roll immediately? Um, the less rolls, the better, has always been my impression with these, okay. so yeah, if you just automatically like, you know, hit somebody else. So, I, you you have maced both, like, this is some, like, full Jason Bourne shit, but with mace. You uh, mace the one cop in the face, the other one kind of can't believe how fast you're moving, and, the, and in the moment where he's stunned, you've maced them too. You don't really have long, uh, but you have a moment to do something. Uh, what do you do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is grab their cuffs. I'm going to handcuff them together. I'm going to take the keys with me. I'm going to get their guns away from them. I'm not taking their guns with me. I'm going to put their guns away from their squad car, like maybe throw them down and into the um, into a sewer drain or something of that nature. And I'm also going to take um, and... Uh, Take the airs out of their tire. Well, let's 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 let's, let's also, yeah do one at a time because I'm taking off out of there. Yeah. So the the first thing which I would say would be the cuffing them together. That sounds like keep your cool, uh, and I would say that's by powering through. Um, so make another plus might roll, just regular two d six this time. Regular. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll do this. I'll make use of it. Okay. So two d six and then add two to the roll. Okay. So. 2d6, mm-hmm. I'm going to roll. Mm-hmm. I got a 4, now I add 2 to that. That's a 6. So six. You, you, you you still failed the roll. <laughs> what else? I don't think I'm doing this right, but... Anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> so, 
Um, let me look at my, my list of things here, because I'm trying to figure out what I want, how mean I want to be. And you've, you've failed a bunch of rolls, so I'm thinking that I'm going to be pretty mean. Um, the one cop, the, the, young, the young Hispanic cop, is like trying to rub the mace out of his eyes, but he has his gun out. And he's like just shooting wildly, and he definitely hits you. Take, take two harm. Uh, however, if you wanted to get away at this point, you could try, and it wouldn't be, like, out of the question. You mean I have to roll again? So, yeah, but you've been, like, shot. Like, where did where did you get hit that it's, like, a substantial wound, but not just, like, a flesh wound? Um, you can say in my upper thigh. You got shot in the leg? Great. Okay, cool. Uh, so... Do you do you try and get away as they're like he's like his 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 clip is empty. He fired his clip. He's done. He can't see. His clip's empty. Yes, I'm gonna try to get away. All right. So that's keep your cool, and that would be that would be hustle. So two d six plus whatever your hustle stat is, which I think is like a one. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So 2d6, and then my modifier is a 1, mm-hmm. and I hit roll. Mm-hmm. Right? So I got a 7. Okay. I, I, I think you you managed to get out of there, um, but there is, like, your windshields are completely shot out. You're not going to be able to be in that truck for very long without being made. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go to my nearest... Um, connection that I have with the mob I'm going to dump my car or the truck, I'm sorry I'm going to dump the truck I'm going to take my my weapon which, by the way, I happen to have a guitar case with me so I'm going to throw it in the guitar case <laughs> well, okay we might want to talk about like not like if that isn't something that we've, like, established... Well, I mean, you do have to wait to transport it. That's fair. So the way that you transport your electricity gun is in a, is in a guitar case. So it's that big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, I mean, you're you're bleeding pretty bad, so that's not going to help hide things too much. So I, I, I'll allow that. That's fine. Um, okay, so are you... Where... How long but bef- does it take you to ditch the car? Like, how many blocks do you drive? Do you ditch it pretty fast? I mean... I ditch it pretty fast. I only drive about maybe three miles. Ditch the car. Traffic's not bad. Big. Okay. Well, just in, in New York City, three miles is a lot. Yeah. Um, all right. I drive a mile. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we will we will return to to where you're going to try and lay low in a little bit. But first, uh, okay. Brooks Parish. Uh, how are you getting to the BQE? Um, boy, it's not established that I have a car. Mm-hmm. Subway's broken. <laughs> are there ca- are there cabs still running? Like, do they oh, do yeah. they care that the lights are? I think I think I hail a cab. Okay. I've got nothing. I've got nothing else to go on if the power's out. The subway isn't running. So, so uh, how much cash does Brooks Parish have? Brooks Parish has two hundred dollars. Oh yeah, you're like the the Gonzo journalist. You're like loaded compared to everybody else. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you can you can definitely take it. So you you get into this cab and it's uh, this kind of like middle aged Italian guy. He's like, hey, hey uh, where are you going? Hey, um, I need to, I need to head towards the uh, the BQE. Um, I'll tell you when to stop. I don't know. I, we're, I, I'm, I'm following up on a lead. I don't know exactly where I'm supposed to. Brooks would not. Have, he doesn't know. Um, just go like. Well, here's the thing that be, you do let know. You know we, There's you. You do know about the substation. Okay, then we head towards the substation. Uh, he's like you know I I, I had a, I had a, a brother who used to do some uh do some he's an electrician used to do some work out there. I think I know you need to go. Uh, I do gotta advise you, uh, we are charging top rate fees today because of the, because of the outage. Everybody wants to take a cab. No, I, I, it's not like we have other options. I mean, like, um, we're going, if you're taking, if I'm taking you from, from, from Manhattan to, to, to Long Island, that's like 50 bucks, minimum. 
Um, I think. Uh, we're gonna do this. Um, I want to offer. I, I think Brooks is. Gonna, I'm gonna try to get what I want here. Um, okay. And here's how I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna tell him the story. <laughs> and I don't. He's like, so hey, man. You know all the. You know all the stuff that's go that's going around, like the this whole son of Sam thing, like the blackout and all that, like. Eat. I got a scoop, and if it starts out at this substation, you get me there. If you get to, and we solve this, and we get to write this up together, you and me. Uh, what's your name, man? Angelo. Angelo, what if we get through this together? You and me, we ride together this whole time. You help me solve this front page tomorrow. Brooks Paris and Brooks Parish and Angelo solved the New York blackout. Brooks, Brooks. Imagine what that would do for business. Everyone would want to ride with you. Did you say your name was Brooks Parish? God, I can't do a New York accent to save my life. Uh, yeah. Um. May I? All right. So now I need you to roll. Get what you want, because then we're gonna see how yeah. the scene plays out. But I get something extra because I'm promising him coverage. That's true. You do. Because <laughs> like, oh, I'm rolling like a god tonight. Uh, that's a 12. <laughs> oh my god. I will show you the screenshot. <laughs> no, I believe you. Uh, I, um, well, you get to pick two. They act immediately. They do not demand immediate payment. They perform especially well. They are happy with the bargain. Uh, I would like, they don't demand immediate payment, and they are happy with the bargain. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait, you're, you're, I, I know you. You raised that guy from the dead. Yes, I did. I, I cannot... Oh, my God, I have a celebrity in my cab. This has never happened before. This is offensive I can't to all believe, New Yorkers. I don't believe, yeah, I don't believe that for a second, Angelo. You seem like you do good at your job. Everybody's been riding with you. I can't believe that little old me is the first celebrity you've ever had. I mean, I, I, I had... I mean, I don't know if he's really a celebrity, but I had that Buck Tussie fellow in my car a couple weeks ago. Uh, oh. <laughs> Brooks tugs on his collar. <laughs> uh, he, he, he had this, uh, this loud fella in, there with him named Roscoe. He wouldn't stop drinking these beers. Uh, but, uh, okay, you, you say you need to go, need to, go to, to Long Island? Let's get to Long Island, baby. Uh, yeah, let's go. You and me. <laughs> all right, great. I think that's a scene. That's a that's a perfect Brooks Parish sequence. Uh, One of these days I'm gonna roll bad, and I can't wait for it to happen. I think I think the whole like, actually this fits perfectly with how I design Brooks. Is he doesn't actually like himself, but he keeps getting away with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Rat King. Uh, you said you wanted to get some air. What does getting some air mean to the Rat King, and where is he going? What are what are his intentions? Um, my intentions to get air are, um, I mean, first of all, it's been a hell of a night so far, so <laughs> I do want to get out of the tunnel. Um, but there's the uh, the Roosevelt Island Mental Asylum is also one of my hideouts, let's say, above ground. And I, I have a, a cache of some of my, um, some of my, uh, my findings over the years of, like, in my, in my X-Tech search. So I, I go up there, and I go to my hideout to see if I can cross-reference anything that I've seen previously about, um, you know, this weird time travel goo <laughs> that... Vin that Vinny spotted down below the river. All right, so I, I think... What is, like, your prized X-Tech possession uh, that wouldn't necessarily have any sort of, like, functionality for you as a character? Like, you wouldn't be able to use it in the course of your sleuthing, but means something to, to the Rat King. It's 
So it can be used as a tool. I mean, it, it, like, it could be, but it mostly maybe it has like personal mental. value, yeah, sentimental value, something like that. Well, I wrote down that the Rat King is divorced, so um, it's a uh, kind of it makes sense then that one of the mementos I hold dear up in the uh, asylum hideout is a garnet ring that I uh, that my ex threw back at me when she when she uh, took the metro north outside of outside of New York. Okay. A real betrayal. A train that I I, I it doesn't have uh, barely has any underground lines on it. Um, and you know I haven't heard from her since. But it's a uh, it's a garnet ring that. In so that when um, you know when looked at in, in a certain light has weird qualities and, and filters the light in strange ways like that you wouldn't expect the, the, that kind of crystal to do. Okay, um, so I, I think uh, can you make a, a scope out a scene roll for me? So I, I want to figure sure. out how much I can give you here. Okay, uh, that's brains. Mm -hmm. Wait. And you get to roll with extra, because um, I've decided that there's X tech in this ring. Well, we've decided, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's three to six, uh, and the top three roll, or the top, be the top two of the of the numbers. Uh, five, three, five. So it's two fives. So. 10 plus, like, so it's 13. Yeah. So Wait, what's get, the three? Uh, so you get the three questions, then. Um, what's the fastest escape route out of here? This doesn't really make sense. Is there anything hidden here? Who's in charge around here? Who's the toughest person in the room? Who's the most vulnerable person in the room? Who knows more than they're letting on? Oh, well, I imagine that the um, the police chief knows more than he's letting on. Um, so I'm kind of like, I have like a whole stack of newspapers lined up in the corner, and I'm looking through some uh, past editions to try and figure out if there's any any news story that might clue me on to like why the police chief would, would be interested in some kind of weird X-Tech uh, goo that would let him see 20 years into the past. Uh, so he... Um, <clears throat> You, you see some stuff uh, that there was, you know, an article written by none other than Brooks Parrish uh, about some sh uh, real estate deals that the police commissioner had going on uh, that seemed a little shady, but nobody could ever stick anything on them. Hmm. Real estate? What, what, what part of the city? Oh, uptown. Uptown hmm. in Brooklyn. I mean, he, he has his hands all over the place. Hmm. Who's the other guy there? Uh, there was a mob boss. Oh, the mob boss. Was it the the guy the Brooks, uh, that Brooks Parish mentioned? It was Big Tony, yeah. Big Tony? Re Reggie. Or Reginald. <laughs> Reginald slash Big Tony? Yep. Okay. Um, same question for him. Why would he be? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. There'd be, there wouldn't necessarily be news articles about it. Right. But, um... You know, maybe uh, I could just try and remember some, like, past conversation I've had with uh, the singular about it while we were exchanging tech. Hmm. I mean, I, I would put that in as, like, uh, who's who's the toughest... I'll, I'll just kind of like, who's the toughest person in the room there, kind of, which is... Uh, you, you've heard a lot of things about, about Big Tony. Uh, it, you're kind of putting two and two together, that... Uh, all the places that he was doing his stuff, you know, busting kneecaps, those rackets and everything, that's also the areas where uh, the police commissioner was uh, trying to buy up real estate. Mm. Interesting. So they're in it together. Good to know. Um... 
Maybe third question, can I just ask Vinny if there's anything that he saw that he neglected to, to mention to me, like in all the in all the hubbub of the scene? Uh he's pretty sure he saw people he saw some rats falling into that goo and they did not come out. Man, he got pretty close, Vinny. <laughs> Don't put him in the danger again, boy. <laughs> I all, you know, off screen I say I will put him inside of danger. You know, the fourth wall. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mary in her voice. He would. <laughs> uh, all right. right. So, so Babs Brooklyn just sent me a text, uh, letting us us know that perhaps after we've all had one last scene, uh, we may need to call it a night. Because because um, Babs, sounds... is, yeah, is, is getting a little late. Um, although I, I think I hope that I can convince us to return to this story at some point in the future. Oh, we're yeah. We're not okay. done. 100%. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, Rat King, it, do you do anything? What What are your plans moving forward with this information? Well, I know that... Um, I'm trying to think. Because I don't really want to, like, approach... The singular right now because we're not in good terms and I mean he's clearly into some gnarly shit right now <laughs> um, and it's not gonna you know I don't think we're in this is a kind of that's another avenue that would be most fruitful to me um, you know what maybe uh the, I know the um, Big Tony has some, you know, underground uh, warehouses along along the, uh, the the Brooklyn Q line that he doesn't know that anybody else knows about, and so I think um, uh, I might uh, I might get back get to that or you know get in that direction and and investigate and see what's going on. Maybe I can like. Unearth some, clues, unearth some clues, so to speak. Okay, and I kind of like that this is like night is starting to fall on the city, and you've decided to go full Batman against the Falcones, or in your case, <laughs> Ratman. Yeah, Batman's got nothing on me. All right, well, Babs Brooklyn, just in case you need to go to bed, uh, where... Gosh, I'm just trying to figure out how to even frame this scene, because you are just... Babs Brooklyn is the hottest mess right now. Because <laughs> I can't roll dice. I'm good. I'm good. I, I can w heal up my wound. Okay, so, I mean... I'm, I'm just trying to figure out a way to, to be, like, true to the fiction that also, like, allows you to, like, pursue a, a safe house. And to me, that, that sounds like... I'm going to have you just kind of make, like, a general keep your cool roll that is uh, plus soul... Uh, if you're if you're lucky, you have a safe house nearby. I have a negative one for a soul. Oh, there you go. So you're gonna probably be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you, you know, you you reach into the like the recesses of your mind. Like, is there some place around here? Please, God, let there be some place I can hide. Okay. So what do I need to do? Roll two d six minus one. So, I just rolled a seven, so take away one, that's six. Correct. <laughs> On. Just wrong. No, I, I, I do, Myra, want to, wanna, like, so, like, since we will get together at some point, you do get one point of experience for every failed roll. Oh, God, we haven't been taking even track of that. So, you're at something like 23 experience. <laughs> At a minimum. <laughs> I'm going to have to go through and keep track of that when I like edit and upload this to YouTube, how many failed rolls you had, so we can... Uh... At least three. <laughs> yeah, I think... Luckily, <laughs> Brooks has zero. <laughs> oh. um, Am I dead? No, you're not dead. Um, you gimped up pretty good. <laughs> Now listen, how am I going to help you guys conquer Son of Sam and collect my boot, my bounty for, for bringing him in? <laughs> <laughs> you might not. Babs Brooklyn might not make it through the story in one piece. 
thank you. Um. Okay, so I think I'm gonna be nice here. Okay. Uh. Good thing I'm your mother. Well. <laughs> so you um. You you do remember that there is a a safe house in your area. <laughs> Mm-hmm, and you're like far. you're like a block a block and a half away from it. It's you know it's it's a mob a mob place. You you brought you know one of your last people there that you had to bring in. Um, you hid them it's there. Tony's so, second cousin Antonio's place. <laughs> it's big. So big Tony's cousin Antonio. Uh, it's his it's his house. Great. It's it's like his uh-huh. basement. Uh, some yep. some some not good things happen to people in little Antonio's basement. Uh Anyways, you are, like, on little Antonio's stoop, about to knock on the door and be like, hey, you know, you need to hide me, when your guitar case basically explodes, uh, and you take two stun harm. You are now not quite passed out, but, like, barely conscious uh, on his doorstep. Oh, Lord. Uh, your gun, which has been backfiring a lot lately, has backfired again. The electricity gun. So I have to roll at least a four or better, right? No, you're not. You're not dead or anything. Oh, okay. Uh, you're just like, a. You're bleeding really bad, and now all of your hair is standing up, and you look like, uh, like the you bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> um. And. <laughs> I mean, if you, I don't know if you, if you can still knock on the door, but if you can, it's like you're, like, barely doing it. You, you're barely standing on your feet at this point. Put my body against it and just... <laughs> Great. And I think that's, that's the final <laughs> shot of Babs Brooklyn for the night. <laughs> uh, Stay tuned for more, folks. The Buck. battered blonde. <laughs> Buck. Uh, where are you and, and Tammy and Roscoe hightailing it to? Um... We are okay. So I'm, I've I've calmed down a little bit. Uh, I'm still freaking out a little bit because I blew a man's brains out, which is which is enough to shake any normal person. Well, you, uh, I don't know if you did you blow his brains out or is it like his stomachs. So like how did you how did you shoot Dick? Oh uh, man, <laughs> maybe I shot him in the dick and it just <laughs> like blew his lower abdomen. <laughs> My wife is screaming because she's downstairs now. I, you know, let's just let's just say that, like, you know, I I shot him and he and he was eviscerated. Sure. You know, as long as we're doing like you know a long double entendre, this. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm in, I, I'm I'm insisting that I'm heading for Long Island, uh, because I have it in my head that uh, don't nobody live down in Brooklyn in Queen like in Manhattan which I guess isn't like like Archie Bunker lives in lives in Queens right like mm-hmm. that's the only person who lives in Queens so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find a hospital because I've been shot I don't know where to go there's no GPS <laughs> I've never I've never actually been here before like I assume I'll see like a blue sign that says hospital I don't even know if they were blue in 1977 I'm just fucking going so <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what role to make you make there, and I figure it would be the same I had her role, which is plus soul. And it's also a negative one for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's all right, though. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll navigate and uh, watch this. This is, this is where I'm going to kill it right God here. is your co-pilot here. That's right. All right, here we go. Yeah, I rolled a 10. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, no, sorry, 9. But, yeah, it's still, so, that's, it's still pretty good. Not as good, but it's it's good. Yeah, so I'm I'm just I'm flying into the night in Green Tammy, trying to figure out um, where the hell a hospital is. Uh, and I I mean I figure you make it to what uh, Brooklyn Sinai or uh, one of one of those one of those Brooklyn hospitals deep in Brooklyn near yeah. near ish to Long Island. And yeah. now I have to figure out how to complicate this because uh, you got the nine. Put some cops on my tail. I mean that that sounds like quite the option, doesn't it? You did just I mean, murder speeding. somebody. <laughs> You're speeding, That's and you true. just killed someone. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not my right my right mind. Like this is this is this is big city living, and it's far too intimidating and <laughs> strange for me. I'm from High Point, North Carolina. There's like fifty thousand people. Like it's just, you know, it, like, like I don't understand. Um, it's like All right. 80, though. So yeah, I mean, I think uh, here's I'm going to offer you a choice, which okay. is that uh, you um, you pull into this, you find a hospital. You, you're like miraculously, you have you've just you turned a corner and there one was. Okay. A- and then uh, there are cops in the oh, fuck. <laughs> in the drive-through. Okay. Like it's hospitals don't have a drive through but I hope you all know what I mean. The- yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, like, like like the waiting room. So so my choice is like go in and try to dodge the cops or like fuck off to another hospital basically, right? Right, yeah, or just deal with the fact that you've got a gunshot wound. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's let's make it interesting. I'm going to uh I'm going to I'm going to like put put the gun underneath my seat. Mm-hmm. Uh I've got, I've got like a little compartment for it, right? It's still like, Ron, it's like, it's like Buck is really into his gun, but he doesn't use his gun. Does that make sense? He's a person from the South, yes. <laughs> yes. So, so he was like, he was like freaked out when he actually had to use it, mm-hmm. right? So okay, so he, he's got like a little compartment for his gun under his seat. He slips it under there, um, and I look at Tammy and Roscoe, and I say, "Y'all watch Green Tammy." Because I, I don't trust this. I don't trust this neighborhood. It's Brooklyn. Brooklyn's dangerous, and uh, I got to go to the hospital. I just gotta. I just gotta deal with the, with the consequences. I don't like the law, but I'm gonna bleed out if I keep on. If, if if I don't get in there, baby, I love you. I'll see you. I promise. I'll be back out. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm gonna light a cigarette and I'm gonna walk in with the lit cigarette because it's the <laughs> '70s. If you can do that. Great. All right, so I mean the, the the two cops take one look at your you know bust your I mean where are you bleeding from where were you shot specifically? Yeah, like just like the, the in shoulder. the shoulder. You know, I okay. got wing, you right. Know? Uh, like what happened to you? Oh, uh, I got shot. I got shot. Uh, Lower East Side. Uh, <laughs> That's where them punk rockers live, right? I'm not sure if punk is a thing yet. Well, I guess it is. Yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> okay. I Sex Pistols was, was 1977. I checked. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For, my, for later Brooks scenes. Okay, great. Good. Um, I mean, that definitely sounds like a smooth hustle. Yeah. I mean, a smooth a keep your cool. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I can do that. I mean, I say that, but I got a nine. All right, great. Uh, um, you are recognized by one of these cops as Buck Tussie. Oh, oh no! Okay. They're like, wait, you're the stock car driver. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, that's right. I was old Fireball Buck Tussie is my name back on the stock car circuit. Why? Why are who? What? Punk rockers are shooting at you in the Lower East Side. Oh man, you can't trust anybody with like that with like a paperclip in their face, man. That's not something you can do. Uh, but uh, you know, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm here for business. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm writing a book, and my agent thought that uh, maybe I might be able to do a little acting on Broadway. So uh, you know, I've showed up. Uh, I've only been here a couple days. I gotta tell you, New York's fucking wild, man. Listen, I gotta like, I gotta check in. I'm not good. I've got, you know, I've I've, I've put some rags on 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 this wound, but I, I don't know if I'm gonna, uh, you know, I, it's 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 not enough. I need some damn pain kill, uh, some damn painkillers. I'm I'm dying here. I mean, I'm not dying. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm I'm not good, man. I'm I'm trying to figure out specifically how to put you in a spot here besides the fact that they recognize you, and I. No, that might be enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you know what actually that's true uh, for reasons that I will uh, uh, that that will pay off later I suppose. It's totally valid. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that leaves Brooks Parish. 
Yeah, for, it does. For your, the final scene of the night. Uh, so, Brooke, you and Angelo... Uh, I think you and Angelo are, are speeding down the, uh, the BQE, and then you come across... Uh, the cop, the Hispanic cop and the white cop, like, who are still, like, wiping fucking mace out of their eyes. Do you tell Angelo to stop? Yes. All right. Hey, Angelo, buddy, um, listen, my my guy was telling me about some, uh, some police stop that, that was around this area. This, this might be it. This could be our first scoop. Uh, pull over. Let me go talk to these guys. Look, Brooks, I don't know about you, but I don't mess with cops. I, I mean, I don't either, obviously, but what else have we got? I mean, Brooks, I'm trying to tell you, and I don't, I don't know how to... I trust you, and uh, I'm, I'm saying this off the record. Do you understand that? Yes. Do, do you actually understand that? Yes. I might have no. a record. I figured that that was where we were going, but... You know, you always leave the room for the benefit of the doubt, right? That's how this works. Look, <laughs> you you talk to these cops. I'm going to drop you off. I'll swing back by in about 20 minutes, okay? Okay. They'll never, you know, they'll never know it was you. <laughs> okay, and then he drops you off and he gets the, the heck out of Dodge. Yeah, let's, let's say he drops me about, like, two blocks away. And okay. so I'll, I'll walk up. Okay. <laughs> I, I am considerate for my new best friend, Angelo. <laughs> Okay, so what do you do once you reach these these cops who are like clearly in a substantial amount of pain? I think I I think I ask I, I I see if they can tell me what happened. Like, hey, like y'all look pretty rough. What, is anything like what happened, guys? Uh, I think I flash my my press credentials or something at them, like long enough that they don't see that it's for a newspaper that I made up. Um, <laughs> Right, you, the thing that you did not choose was actual press credentials. Yes, so, I chose fake ones. So actually, I am going to make you roll uh, to uh, get what you want here. Uh, okay. Um, That's a, Am I smoothing this one? Yeah, and I'm going to have you roll at advantage because they're blinded from the mace. Cause they're, yeah, because they're maced. Yeah. Oh, that's a 5-5-6. Five, five, Brooks wins again. <laughs> God, Brooks is unstoppable. So the hero I might options, actually be God. They act immediately. They do not demand immediate payment. They perform especially well. They are happy with the bargain. I just kind of need to know what do you want from these cops? I want them to tell me what happened, and for them to let me follow up on that without them asking any questions. <laughs> So that would be, they act immediately, and they do not demand immediate payment, I think. Yes. Uh, okay. Oh, I mean, I think they, they give you the rundown. They were assaulted by this woman in a leather jacket in a red pickup truck uh, who had some weird gun they've never seen before. Uh, and then she maced them both. And then she, and she maced you both. And uh, okay, the, well, the Hispanic cop says, I think I shot her, but I can't be sure. I couldn't see what I was doing. Okay, so you you were just kind of firing wildly, uh, as cops are known and, to do. Yeah, as cops are known to do. Um, and so, do you know where she do you know where she was coming from, or was there anything distinctive about the truck or anything like that? I mean, it had it had some scorch marks on it. Uh, okay, it, would I, you say they were coming from like Long Islandy? Well, I, I, like Brooks is trying to get them to confirm what he thinks he knows. I mean, the, the cops looks like, you know, look, we, we stopped her because that transformer blew. Uh, that's, that's all I really know at this time. I can't, I can't, you know, can't confirm anything else. I, look, I got to get out of here. Can you call me an, uh, an ambulance? I can't operate my radio right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh. You you know what I'm thinking. That you're going to faith heal them? I think I might try to faith heal them. <laughs> to see if I can get, the, see if I can get uh, this guy as a contact moving forward. Maybe if I, if I hug his pain away. Um. I'm going to like you. 
<laughs> Alright, so f let's see. Faith healing. Once, once foreseen, and then I can lay a hand on someone who recently suffered for harm. Roll plus soul. Alright, Brooks is rather soulful. Not ex He's not as soulful as he is smooth, but, he, you know, when you steer into the skid. That's a goddamn ten. <laughs> That's a four and a five. All right, great. Uh, Once again, I will send you the screenshots if necessary. No, I, I don't believe this either. I no, I believe you. I, I don't think that a, a minister would lie to me about their roles. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to, to figure out. I heal two harm up to two harm on a ten plus. So, uh, you not only does this guy's eyes stop like his he, like he just like his eyes start. Flushing, like like and tears. His contacts fall out of his eyes, and you can see. <laughs> no, 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 we're not going to go quite there. I was going to do something similar to that, though, which is like, uh, oh God, man. he like had torn like a hamstring or something. It's like, and I, what? How do I feel better? Who are you? And that's where we we close uh, yeah. for the day. Uh, great, um, y'all. This was so much fun. <laughs> This is good times. It's fun, y'all. Yeah. Uh, does everybody want to do a quick introduction for themselves where they can, you know, find their work, etc., etc.? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Ian Williams. Uh, you can mostly find me on Vice, uh, sometimes on Waypoint. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Brock underscore Tune. And uh, I usually post things there uh, for my work and stuff like that. And you also wrote a game that uh, runs on this engine. Oh God, I sure did. Um, I, <laughs> I wrote a, I, I wrote a, I wrote a Powered by the Apocalypse World game called um, uh, Action Movie World. I was also the editor on uh, Worldwide Wrestling, which we mentioned earlier in the in the broadcast. So uh, yeah, I do games too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Babs, do you want to go? Oh, I'm Myra. I work for an aerospace company, and um, I'm Dawn's mom. And I'm enjoying this. This is my first ever role-playing game or anything like this, so I'm having fun. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Brooks? Hi, uh, I'm Jeff Hinton. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at JM Esquire uh, with my incredibly normy content over there. Or you can find the things that I write infrequently at irrationalconfidence.com. And I'm um, Yusuf Cole. You can find me on Twitter at YumiU. And yeah, I do a lot of freelance writing for um, you know magazines like Waypoint and Paste and uh, Unwinnable. And um, yeah, I... I actually been doing some writing about um, New York and and like kind of a like white flight and some uh, real estate stuff in the seventies. So this game is good is is providing me with good like kind of imaginative background for some of my some of my essays. <laughs> um, and I'm Don Sauce. I am also a freelance video game journalist. You can find my stuff at Paste and Waypoint. Uh, and sometimes at GameSpot. Uh, I used to be the managing editor over a website in New York City called Babel Music. And you can find some of my more recent, uh, more personal essays at uh, www.newslang89.wordpress.com. Uh, and thanks for watching us play Spirit of 77. And thank you to, let me make sure I get their names right, uh, people who made the game. Uh, David Kitsia and Bob Richardson for writing the game and also for D. Vincent Baker for making Apocalypse World. Uh, so, y'all, we are going to for sure play this again very soon. Um, and this is so much fun. I am having a blast. Uh, and I'm going to stop this at the recording now.